creating an award-winning film isn't just a dream anymore, because with Runway Act 1, this becomes reality. Enter, if you dare, and I steal a piece of your soul. <laughs> just kidding. Or am I? In this video, I'll cover how to use a driving video in Runway Act 1 to turn your images into film quality scenes. I'll go through four options for complex to easy for training a model of yourself or any other consistent character. I'll share what prompt I used and how I created my alien images. Then I'll test how far I can push Act 1 with my driving video and see if I can create a well-functioning, consistent character model from it. Let's jump onto the Runway website. After creating an account, you'll see the new Act 1 tool featured at the top of the homepage. Before we get started creating a video, I want to quickly cover the essential setup for the driving video. By clicking the More Details button, you'll find a full description, but here's a quick overview of the key elements to keep in mind. Ensure your video has proper lighting, your face is forward facing and centered, and it stays within the frame. Keep movements minimal as it doesn't yet react to hand or arm movements, and avoid background distractions. Also make sure your mouth movements and expressions are very clear. Back on the homepage, I'll click the Try It Now button, where you will see another preview of how your driving performance video should look. Once we click Select Asset, we can upload our video by dragging it into here. You can then choose a character from their library, which includes photorealistic, 3D animated, 2D animated and illustrated characters. And of course, you can upload your own image. The Act 1 Help page provides more in-depth information on this, but the basics are simple. Make sure your image features a human character with the face and shoulders visible. Forward facing front views work best, while profile views don't work at all. Although the site says that half body shots work and full body shots don't, I found that medium or close up shots give the most realistic results. Before testing my front view image and my slightly side view image, I want to show you another important detail about the image you choose. So for this, I'll select this sinister dark character who's looking slightly downward with his chin close to his chest. In the final result, you'll notice that this angle carries over into the animation, impacting the overall look, even though my face in the driving video is straight and not angled down. So we can clearly see that the character image has a very big influence on the final shot. Let's add my alien shot by clicking on the upload button, and then drag in my image and hit generate. Now comparing the two shots side by side, I think the front view image looks just a bit more realistic. That said, I'm also quite happy with the slightly side view shot. Overall, I am very impressed with this new feature. I love it. Now I can transform myself into any film character and finally become the famous actor I've always dreamt of. Let's go over the four main options for creating images of yourself or any other consistent character. I chose these four options because they provide flexibility for everyone. From more complex methods if you have a powerful computer with at least 8 to 12 gigabytes of VRAM, to simpler ones if you prefer to use an online platform in the cloud. We'll start with my YouTube buddy Mick Mumpit's amazing consistent character sheet workflow, which prepares the best possible dataset for training your own LoRa using FluxGym locally. In his tutorial, he explains in depth how to achieve the best results for creating a consistent character sheet, and how to train it. If you want to train a LoRa of yourself, you can use this character sheet as a reference for taking photos of yourself. The pros of this method are that out of the four options, I believe it offers the most control and the best results. Additionally, you can use this LoRa on other platforms, and it's free since it can run locally on your computer. However, this is also a downside. I mean, is it free if you'll need a high-end computer with at least 8 to 12 gigabytes of VRAM? The second option is ideal if you don't have an expensive computer. However, it is slightly more challenging than options 3 and 4. And in this tutorial, CyberJungle explains in depth on how to do this on Replicate AI. Although it's not very complex, it does require a few more steps compared to options 3 and 4. And you also need to register on Hugging Face for the license and create a repository ID for your model. The pros of this method are that you don't need to install any software and you can also download the LoRa, allowing you to use it on other platforms like Comfy UI or Forge UI. The downside is that you'll need to pay for this platform. But having said that, it builds per second. So typically for a 20 minute training session with around 20 images and 1000 steps, you can expect to pay about 2 US dollars. Let's move on to the simpler option 3, which is using OpenArt AI to train your own consistent model. And in this tutorial, Tao Proms demonstrates how to do this. He starts by creating a basic character sheet, extracting a dataset from 8 images out of it. Then in the model tab, it only takes 4 steps to create the model. The pros of this method 
are that it is very easy to set up and requires only a few clicks to create the model. The downside is that this isn't a Flux LoRa, so it won't work on other platforms. It's a model that stays within OpenArt AI, meaning you also need to create your AI images here. If you're looking for more control, this might not be ideal. I'm not sure of the exact pricing for training a model, but the starter subscription is $14 per month, which should get you a long way. Option 4 might surprise you, because it involves using Midjourney. While you can't train a model there, they recently added the option to edit your own images. This means you could potentially place yourself in a spaceship cockpit, as Wade McMaster demonstrates in this tutorial. He first erases the background, leaving only the face, and then adds a text prompt to create the spaceship cockpit. He also shows how you can add objects to the subject. This way you can transform yourself into a new character, and use Runways Act 1 to create video content from it. The pros of this method are that it is very easy to use, since the Midjourney interface is straightforward. And if you already have a Midjourney subscription, the cost of creating an image is quite low. However, the downside is that the image editor is currently in an early rollout and testing phase. It's only available to certain member groups. But don't worry, I don't think it will be long before it's available to all Midjourney users. Before we dive into pushing the limits of Act 1 and testing whether we can create a Flux LoRa from it, I'll quickly show you how I created the prompts for my alien shots. Since I trained my model locally using Flux Gym, I created my images in ConfiUI. In the LoRa loader node, I'm going to switch from the Flux Realism LoRa to the Lenny LoRa. Now I have a variety of settings that help me fine tune my images, like the Flux Guidance, Max Shift and Base Shift settings and the LoRa Strength. If you're new to ConfUI and find the workflow overwhelming, in this tutorial I provide an in-depth explanation of how to set it up locally and how to use it on Rendezvousion, an online ConfUI solution in the cloud. From our Ultimate Prompt Toolkit's Horror Genre Inspiration Spades, I selected an alien with a grisly brain covered by translucent, gelatinous skin layered with putrescent slime as the subject. Holy guacamole, that was quite a sentence. When we developed this prompt toolkit, we tested over 3000 prompts. And one thing I've learned is that the more precisely you describe what you want, the better the images tend to turn out. So let's describe our scenery in depth. And for that, from the sci-fi scenery inspiration page, I took this prompt. Futuristic science lab filled with large cylinders of liquid containing various bizarre and exotic alien creatures. Please remember, I used my own LoRa, which had a significant impact on the final image. And without my own LoRa, the images will look like this. Now we're getting to the exciting part, testing how far we can push our input image. For this, I'll upload my character image and hit generate. When we compare the driving video with the newly generated video, we can clearly see that the new video stops at about a 35 degree angle and there's some morphing in the face, plus a funky arm suddenly appears. Honestly, this is the only time I've encountered this issue. Further along we can see it reacts well to facial expressions, though slight morphing in the face and lip texture does occur. I also tested using a close-up driving video with a close-up image, but the end result was similar with the same skin morphing happening as in the medium shot. This doesn't mean I'm dissatisfied with Runway Act 1. On the contrary, I really like the tool and I'm impressed by its results. You just need to be aware of its limitations to achieve the best outcome. Let's see if we can create a Flux LoRa from this video. I'm excluding the shots where her face was at a 35 degree angle, as the morphing was too pronounced and likely wouldn't contribute to a good LoRa. Still, I was able to extract 9 good images out of this. In Flux Gym, I used 2000 steps with 9 images, which took about an hour and a half to train. In ConfUI, I'm going to load the Sarah LoRa, which is the trigger word that I created for it. I'll run a few prompts and share the results so you can judge if the LoRa model is a success. I've added both the images and the prompts in my Discord group, in the Share AI Images channel. You can use the prompts directly or drag the images into Comfy to load the settings. Invite link is in the description. I'm quite pleased with the result of the first image. Then I tried a profile shot and despite not having profile images in my training data, I was surprised at how closely it resembled the girl from the video. Here are some more results with other prompts. And I know they aren't always 100% perfect, but these aren't cherry picked. I even tried creating a Pixar style render from Sarah. And I'm very happy with those results as well. Here's another two realistic images, which I'm also quite pleased with. And if you're interested in creating realistic images with Flux, then make sure to watch this video.